Stitch Sisters, I'm Rachel. I'm Nikki. And we are here today to bring you an extra special video as part of the Smiley, Smiley. 2018 Challenge. Now, you must have been living under a rock in the sewing community <laughs> if you haven't heard what this is yet. Yes. Um, but Smiley stands for Sewing Makes You Love Yourself. And it is an initiative set up by um, Hattie from Hattie Sews, um, Lisa, Lisa Kitch, Kitch. Um, and um, Athena, Athena Kaku, Kaku uh, from Craftaholic. <laughs> and they came up with this brilliant idea Idea to start a challenge which encourages everybody to make something that makes them feel really good about themselves yeah um, and it's all about promoting positive body image and um, mental, mental health, health awareness yes. um, and we are both big fans of all those things yes um, we've both in our own way had body image and mental health issues at some point in the yeah. past it's it's most important is it, it is to talk about it to be open about it absolutely and to, um, and to share your story because it might help someone else so that's what we've yeah we're trying to do in our videos here yes um, so we've both made something and we'll come back to that in a little while to yes. talk about it in a bit more detail yes. but in the meantime we thought it was very brave it was hard for both of us to do yes. uh, but we thought it was probably best for us to discuss our sewing and our smiley stories separately because they mm -hmm. are different and obviously yep. we've not had the same journey getting to this point here no. um, so we we're not those... really sisters <laughs> We've only known each other for about five years. Yes, believe it or not. <laughs> not even that, it's no. under five years. It'd be yeah. five years in April. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so obviously we thought we'd share our stories separately. So uh, they're coming up now. Yep. And then we'll come back to you at the end and talk about our makes. So my sewing story goes back quite a while really. Um, my mum was a sewer um, and I remember her mum was as well. Um, she used to make a lot of clothes for myself and my sister and my brothers occasionally. Um, but I think it was mainly out of necessity because we didn't have a lot of money. I'm one of seven children um, and my mum wanted us to look nice and so she found the most cost effective way to do that was to make our clothes. Um, but I, like most kids, remember not really liking handmade. I didn't like wearing handmade. I would have much rather have gone to the shops and chosen something like um, lots of like all the other children seem to be able to do um, and so I didn't really appreciate it at the time until I became a teenager and realized that that was a way of me being able to wear things that weren't in the shops that was different to everyone else um, I always remember feeling very different to everyone. Um, I've always been what I consider a misfit and, um, and I'm totally fine with that and always have been. I'm very comfortable being a bit different and a bit off the wall and I've always kind of attracted those kind of people. So my friends have always been a little bit different as well and not really fit in with everyone else. Um, and so when I was a teenager and decided that the thing that I needed to wear at age 13 was a massive pair of pinstripe flares, then it was nice to be able to have my mum show me how to sew those. Um, and uh, I would often go to the what would now be called vintage markets, but now, uh, but then were secondhand markets in my local town, um, where you could go and buy secondhand Levi's and secondhand Doc Martens and various crazy 70s shirts. Um, and I would love going there on a weekend and finding interesting things that didn't often fit me, so I would bring them home and and adjust them so that they would fit me a little bit better. Um, and so I do remember loving dressing differently and loving uh, sewing for that reason. It was a means to an end um, and it allowed me to have things that were a bit different and have them fit me better. But then I went on to uh, working, I went to college, went to work um, and uh, continued to dress in my own individual way but a lot more shop bought stuff because um, I had more money and I could I enjoyed shopping and I could buy whatever I wanted so my sewing kind of slipped away at that point and um, I only really took it up after I had children so I had my son um, and um, and I think that that's where things started to change for me so he's now 12 so about 12 years ago um, I kind of lost my way a little bit when I became a mum I completely lost my sense of identity. My son was born premature, he was born with a cleft lip and palate, so the first few months were really quite hard, he was quite poorly, um, and then from then onwards my whole life became about him. I never thought about how I looked or anything like that, it was all about making sure that I was doing the best for him. And then my daughter came a couple of years later, 
and that coincided with a move down to Cornwall for a year. My husband decided to retrain and we moved to Cornwall so that he could do that. And I found myself in a very isolated village, um, pregnant with a toddler, um, and I was very, very low during that whole time. I was very sad and, um, and I kept thinking it's because of the circumstances um, and it will get better once the baby comes. And when she was born, um, obviously I loved her to bits, but I found that sadness never really went away. In fact, it got a lot worse. Um, and so it was at that point that I realized that I'd been suffering from depression through my pregnancy. Um, and I went to see the doctor and through counseling and medication, I did manage to feel a lot better, but it took a while to get to that stage. And when I started to feel better, I realised that all this had happened and I didn't really know who I was anymore. I'd completely lost my sense of identity. Um, and I was doing what most mums do, I think, just getting through the day, um, taking care of the kids. Um, how I looked and how I felt about myself seemed so far down my list of priorities that it wasn't really important. And for the first time in my life, I started doing something that I never thought I would do and I started trying to fit in with everyone else. I felt like the mums at the school were very judgy and that me being a misfit was really not a good thing and I wanted my friends, my kids to have friends to play with. I wanted them to be invited to birthday parties and have play dates and those kind of things. And if everyone thought I was a bit weird, then clearly <laughs> that wasn't gonna happen. So I felt like I needed to um, try and fit in a little bit more and I stopped dressing in a way that made me happy and started dressing in a way that kind of fit in more with the other mums at school. And I found that during that time I was really sort of watering down my personality and, um, and getting even more lost and really had no idea who I was anymore. Um, and then I decided, it was um, one day I was shopping, um, I used to spend a lot of time in charity shops, as I always have, um, and I found a book about 50s fashion. And, uh, and I was flicking through this book and, and looking at all these very glamorous silhouettes and thinking about how beautiful all of these ladies looked. And I thought to myself, do you know, I think I might give that a go. I think with my new curvier proportions since becoming a mum, that would suit my shape. And so I decided to have a go at making a, a big poofy 1950s dress. And I got my mother-in-law to help me because my sewing skills were a little bit rusty. And uh, so she sort of helped me find my way through buying the fabric and making my, my first dress in many, many years. Um, and I loved it. I loved how it made me feel. Um, and I really got into that whole uh, vintage uh, look, both dressing and the way I styled my house and the way I styled my hair and my makeup. Um, and I felt like it gave me a little bit back that sense of identity that I had lost. Um, but then I realised um, that I was what it was doing was giving me very safe parameters in which to be myself. So I felt like there were rules for the vintage sort of aesthetic that if I followed, then I got to look a bit different and feel a bit different. Um, but it was not really expressing myself as an individual. It was more trying to recreate an alternative look. Um, and over the last couple of years, uh, the last sort of four years now it's been, that Nikki and I have been running the Sobri Sewing School, I've been lucky enough to immerse myself completely in sewing and to do nothing but sewing. It's my job, it's my hobby, and it gives me such a nice outlet, such an important creative outlet, um, that it's allowed me to uh, spend so much time thinking about what I wanna make and uh, trying different things in different styles. And I've realized that that's a really important part of my mental health, um, that I need to have a creative outlet. I need to have a way um, to express myself creatively, to feel good about myself. But I've also found that how I dress also has a big impact on how I feel about myself. And that it is really important to me to feel good in the clothes that I wear, because otherwise I feel like I'm a reduced version of myself on the days when I'm wearing something that doesn't make me feel good. And knowing that's important is one thing, and, and giving myself the um, opportunity to spend that time making those things and trying to uh, you know bolster my self-esteem in that way is one thing 
But I've also found that in the last couple of years, I've really fallen into a trap of, um, which I think lots of us do, of judging myself a little bit too harshly and having the skills to sew doesn't necessarily make that any better. I think in some ways it can make it worse because I can create whatever I want to, but I tend to, I feel like I've been restricting that based on what I feel like I should be wearing, whether that's because of my body shape or whether that's because of my age, but I'm often saying, oh, I couldn't wear that, I'm too old, or I couldn't wear that, I'm too fat, or you know, I couldn't wear that because that's what the kids wear and, and I'd look like I was trying too hard. And I think that's a really dangerous situation to get in because it's such a waste of this amazing creative outlet that I have and these skills that I have. And there are lots of people that would love to be able to create whatever looks they wanted. And restricting that by telling myself I'm a pear shape so I shouldn't wear that cut, um, I think is really sad. Um, so it's actually one of my resolutions for this year is to try and silence all those little voices in my head that tell me that you can't wear that. Um, and instead to try and use my sewing to express myself in any way I want to and to go back to that freedom that I had as a teenager, to be that misfit, to not follow the, what everybody else is doing to think about what makes me feel good. And I read a really interesting article actually, which I definitely recommend by Anushka Reese, who is the, um, the author of The Curated Closet, which I read over the Christmas period. Um, and she talks about why body shapes can be really dangerous and about how if we're too busy trying to create looks that are flattering on our body shapes, then we're really reducing our ability to be creative. We're restricting um, our, ourselves to certain styles or certain looks. Um, when opening all that up and allowing yourself to create anything that you want is much more freeing. And I think that whilst a certain cut might make you look a little bit slimmer, wearing something that you genuinely love can make you stand a little bit taller and walk with so much more confidence and I think that that's so much more attractive than whether you've got a bit of a tummy that you've managed to hide or whether you've just left it out you know, on display. It doesn't really matter um, as long as you feel good about yourself and, and I think that's one thing. It's taken a long time but I think that's one thing that sewing has finally taught me is that um, those skills can be put to much better use by giving myself the freedom to express myself in any way I want to and not letting the sort of uh, general public perception of what is attractive at the moment affect my decision in any way. Hi, it's Nikki, and uh, this is my sewing story. Uh, thank you to Rachel for doing her one. And it's a bit weird, I am just a bit nervous because I'm not normally on the camera by myself. So if I am a bit fidgety, then that's why. <laughs> <laughs> but um, just starting with talking to you about my sewing story, why I started sewing and when I started sewing, I'm quite late to the game. I've done, I've done lots and lots of crafts. I was one of those people who jumped around through different things. I've done pottery and photography and jewellery making and all sorts. And I think I was looking for the right thing for me. And it wasn't until I, I decided I wanted to make a quilt. So I started hand sewing and loved it completely. So, but it was too slow. So I wanted to buy a sewing machine and my friend very kindly showed me how to use it. And I started quilting and I absolutely loved it. And it was so all encompassing in those beginning months that it, it, it was everything I, everything I wanted to do. I was doing it all the time, teaching myself and buying lots of books and sort of doing it all by myself and I loved it and I ended up doing it as a business and selling bits and pieces in fairs and shops and things like that but it was I felt as if I couldn't do dressmaking I felt as if it was too complex for me and I didn't have anyone to show me until I met Rachel and she she moved in opposite us and uh, and we became friends and we started dressmaking together and that was wonderful and this opened up a whole new range of different things for me but this was all about uh, my boys are 10 so I've got twin 10 year olds and I started sewing probably when they were about one so it's maybe only nine years but I'm that kind of person I'm in 100% when it's something that I love 
And so it's now my business and it's my hobby and it's all I ever think about and Rich will tell you it's all I ever talk about. So <laughs> it, it is everything to me and it has given, given me such a lot of focus in my life and it's given me a, a job and something as a business as well, which is part of the reason why I love it because I can use all my skills with it. So the Smiley Challenge was um, appealed to Rachel and I, but particularly me because of the mental health side of it. And I don't know anyone who hasn't suffered with some kind of mental health, whether it's been serious enough to be diagnosed and to have medication to help it, but I think it happens to everyone. Um, with me, I am quite an inward looking person and I'm quite, paranoid naturally by nature so I do tend to overanalyze everything and I tend to get myself in a bit of a tiz about things if something hasn't quite worked the way I wanted it to or I've misread things I do tend to misread situations quite a lot but that's because my brain is making me see things that aren't there and I need to get away from that and part of what I want to do for my own mental health this year is to stop myself from doing that and it's part of my acceptance of who I am. I'm not going to change that part of me because it is part of me but it's something that I need to get a grip on and realise that it's there and that it's happening and I think just that acknowledgement that it is all in my head <laughs> and I don't need to, and it's not in anyone else's head, that alone is quite freeing and and I have suffered with um, depression. My mum passed away uh, about eight years ago now. It's actually her birthday today. So if I do get a bit teary, that's probably why, but it felt right to do it today. So in tribute to my mum. Um, so it is her birthday today, but she would have loved all of this that we are doing, all of the sewing and the dressmaking. I probably would have been making as much for her as I would for myself. And uh, and I miss her terribly and it doesn't, it does get easier, but it's always there. And I think particularly at times like when it's her birthday or when it's um, the anniversary of her death or Christmas, it's very raw and I can feel myself getting into that depression again. But as soon as that time passes, it, sewing definitely helps and being busy for me helps as well, which is, is fantastic, the fact that we, we are so busy with the business and everything like that. So I can throw myself into that and it does help to heal me as well. So it's, um, so I have suffered with it and I think it is something that everyone suffers with and we just have to get the help that we need. And I was on medication for about a year, a year and a half and I was skeptical but it did help me and I don't think I could have gotten through that period without it. So I am grateful for that but I, it also makes you very aware, it makes me very aware that there is there is a point that I can get to and I don't, if I get to that point then I need help and I think it's something about admitting that to yourself and to everyone around you as well, being open and being, um, you know, talking to your partner or talking to your friends and letting them reassure you that everything is fine and that, you know, especially with me, with being <laughs> having my paranoid personality, it can it can get overwhelming sometimes and um, Rachel will tell you that more than anyone that uh, you know I can be upset about something that's happened three months ago that she's completely forgotten about so I just have to let it go sometimes and I'm trying to be more um, accepting of that part of my personality and about body image sorry I'm just regaining my control um, body image as well was another one that I particularly was interested in and I am straight up and down and I can buy things from the shops and it's never been an issue but I was five foot ten when I was 12 so when I left primary school I was taller than every child and every teacher in the school and to this day and I'm 46 now I do still feel like the BFG I, I feel like a big giant in a normal world and even though now at five foot ten I didn't grow any more after that, but at five foot ten now is not tall, but I still feel like a big gangling huge person. And that's something I have to fight with all the time. And I see myself, it's, it's not body dysmorphia, but I just feel like I've got massive shoulders and massive feet and I'm taller than everyone else. And that's not the case. And I think that's something that sewing has helped me 
sort of regain control of my own body image and try and give me confidence and give me things to wear that make me feel fabulous. So, and I think more than the, sh the things in the shops have as well, because I can convey my own personality much more than what next or Marks and Spencers think I should be wearing um, and a lot of the time because I am long-limbed it doesn't quite fit me right and things like that so I can take all of that into account and things just feel better and I feel more me in my own clothes so it is something that has and it's given me a lot of confidence as well my you know I can I can suffer with my own self-confidence as well it's all part of my internal workings and um, and I it I think it does help if you feel good when you leave the house or when you put your clothes on in the morning. If, if that gives you a little boost, sometimes it's just that little kick that you need to get on with the rest of the day and, and to make the rest of the day good. So you start off with a smile and the rest of the day will follow suit. So that's the way I sort of look at it. And, um, and I've just started my dressmaking journey. I know there's a lot more to come and I'm very, very excited about it. And I can't wait to see where it goes. So, so that was our stories. And uh, we thought it would be interesting for you as well to hear our joint story, because obviously you've what we've just said is, is things that before we actually met. So we met five years ago when mm -hmm. you, Rachel moved into the village and um, we soon realised on the walk to school, walking the children to school together, that we both sewed. So I was quilting and doing general crafts and you were doing dressmaking. Mm -hmm. And we decided to do some sewing together, which was lovely because it can be quite a solitary thing when you're sewing and you don't yes. know anyone else who sews. Mm -hmm. So we started sewing together and drinking lots of coffee. Yes, we definitely recommend that if you are a solitary sewer, find yourself a sewing buddy. I know that find sounds a really stitch sister. Stitch sister. <laughs> yeah. Find yourself a stitch sister because I know it seems really scary um, to start off with, but the sewing community on social media oh, they're just amazing. Is, is just brilliant. Yeah. And you will find someone in yes. your area who likes to sew. And it's nerve wracking that first time. But just you've got so much in common. Yeah. You know, even if you just end up talking about fabrics and patterns, that could be four hours before yes. you even come up for an air. Exactly. But so. if it really isn't convenient, because some people really don't live anywhere near anyone else that sews, and yeah. if you really do find it difficult to meet people in real mm -hmm. life, then again, just having that that chat with someone online is um, brilliant. And sharing yes. your makes online definitely helps. Yes, so if it you does. don't sew and share stuff on social media mm -hmm. yet, then we would definitely recommend it because people don't shoot you down. Um, they're very supportive no. regardless of your level of sewing and your ability everyone's very supportive and yep. it'll definitely give you a little boost absolutely but we found that more than anything haven't we in our classes mm. so we started the sewing school together and mm -hmm. it, we didn't I didn't expect it still to be running no. after I didn't expect it to be running at all <laughs> so I, because it was it was your sort of idea and everything and I, I was, just wanted to teach I'd had people ask yeah. me and I didn't want to do it on my own I was a bit scared so I thought we'd, I, I'd do it with see me. if Nikki would teach with me <laughs> um, but but that's very much what we went into it thinking is that we were teaching people how to sew, how yes. to use a sewing machine, how to read a sewing pattern. Basic but stuff. But it's been so much more than that. Oh, And yes. I think that's why it's relevant to the Smiley Challenge mm. is because what we have found is that sewing and coming to classes, but sewing in general, mm. um, helps people in so many more ways. Mm. So we've had so many people say to us after, uh, you know, after they've been coming for a while, you didn't know this, but when I started sewing with you, I was back depression mm -hmm. or my mum had just passed away or um, I was out of work period, and yeah. having a really tough time mm -hmm. and I can't tell you how much sewing has helped me yes and I think it's because it gives you this great sense of achievement doesn't mm -hmm. it it makes you feel like whatever your day job is whatever you know you else you've got it. going mm -hmm. on in your life you've achieved something Absolutely. and it's wearable yes and it's or it's usable if it's, it doesn't have to be dressmaking it can be anything it yeah doesn't yeah absolutely but it's it's a beautiful thing and you've yes, done it you've, you've done, done it. it yourself but also what we've um, what we do find we get a lot of teachers mm -hmm. and we get a lot of nurses and we got a lot of people in very stressful jobs yeah and so coming to do something with class they're coming out of the house they're meeting other people yeah they're chatting they're being social they're th they're forgetting about the stress yeah. that they're going through with their job or or, or whatever 
whatever yeah. in their life and they just concentrate on making this bag or making this top and it, it is such a heart lifting thing to it be is. in a room with other people who all love the same thing as you yeah. and you're and, you know it's like you're in a little gang and it's, yeah. it is, it's, it's brilliant. wonderful and we just feel like the luckiest people in the world that we get to we see are. that all the time <laughs> we yeah. get to share that with people yeah. and um, and we, we get to see them be so proud of themselves when mm -hmm. they've achieved something that they never thought they would no. be able to do and um, it's it's just one of those things that it's quite simple really sewing is very accessible I'm not saying that sewing is easy I'm no. saying you know it, it can be you can take baby steps and still feel like you're really mm -hmm. achieving something mm -hmm. and but one thing I have found is that sewers are very self-critical Oh, I think yeah. all creative people are. All the OCD comes out, even yeah. though you didn't have any before you started yeah. sewing. We've yes. had a lot of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think that that is also part of your sewing journey, mm. is that you have to learn to give yourself a bit of a break. Yeah. You have to learn to say, okay, it's not perfect, but it is mm. my first go yeah. at this pattern, or using this fabric, or sewing in general. Or I've never put a zip in before, or anything like that. Exactly. It's all a learning process, and we very often say to people, especially beginners who come, who have never on before if you rocked up to a tennis club and picked up a racket you wouldn't expect to be Andy Murray by the end of your first one hour lesson yeah. but a lot of people have such high expectations and I think it's part of our perfectionist nature I think yeah. and especially craft people they want to be able to recreate something and make it as good as as it is in the shops or yeah. someone else has made yeah. but it is all a learning process yeah and I think the most important thing is it's, it's about finding the, the positives it's yeah. about forcing yourself training yourself mm. to just look at the positives and I think and that works it. just as much for body yeah. image as well so yes. in my story I mentioned um, a little bit about um, how I often tell myself that mm -hmm. I have been guilty of telling myself in the past that I'm too old or I'm too fat to wear mm. something mm -hmm. and I really need to stop doing that and one of the things that I'm trying to do mm -hmm. is that um, I'm trying to be a bit kinder to myself. So yes. you know how there's that time when you're getting undressed, you're getting dressed in the morning and you look at yourself in the mirror and you go, oh. <laughs> And your eye yes. is naturally drawn to the rolls and the stretch marks or, you know, things not quite sitting at the level they used to <laughs> or um, veins or, you know, so many other things. Yeah. Um, or the fact that you haven't had a chance to shave your legs for three weeks or whatever else. You're always drawn to those things. It's the imperfections. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that's just very human. I think yeah. we all do that. But I am I'm going through this exercise where whenever I do that, I'm forcing myself... As soon as my brain does that, I think, yeah. right, now you've got to find a positive. Yes, that's so really good. Then I think to myself, oh, well, you know, your, your skin's not too bad. Yeah, for, or I painted my nails the other day. day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, you know, I, I really like the shape of my hips yeah. or, you know, whatever it is, it's finding something mm -hmm. to feel positive mm. about and I think if you can do that Brain when you look training. in the mirror exactly it's yeah. training yeah but if you can do it when you look in the mirror and you can do that when you look at your sewing yes. and anything else that you know you you're self-critical about yes then I think it does really help because if you do that often enough mm -hmm. sooner or later you'll start to see those things naturally yes and one day they might even silence those other little negative yes. voices wouldn't that be lovely oh, it would be <laughs> should we tell you about our makes yes so that your Let's kimono about is makes. looking gorgeous yes just so say. this is the decades of style 1920s tulip pattern the fabric is uh, this gorgeous japanese seven berry fabric is from doughty's online mm -hmm. um and then the suede this faux suede comes from uh Fabric Online. Mm -hmm. They are called fabriconline.co.uk, um, and this is a, for me is a perfect example of uh, creating something that I know I'm not going to see anywhere else. It's not in fashion at the moment, so no. you know I'm not going to find anything like it. And no one's going to put these two fabrics together nope. with that pattern, mm -hmm. and no one's then going to wear it in the way that I'm going to wear it. Mm -hmm. um, so I just love how it allows you to be an individual and express yourself um, in a way that's completely unique and that's what sewing means to me more than anything yeah um, but in terms of the actual pattern itself it's it's a great pattern it's relatively simple to follow um, it was made more difficult by the fact that I chose to use suede for my uh, bands and cuffs <laughs> um, which you can't really press that well so um, lots of under stitching involved um, 
A couple of downsides to the pattern that I'll mention, just in case you decide that you want to make one. Yeah. Um, it was very, very long, and I decided that I wanted to shorten the bands, but that's just a style choice. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't make the band along the bottom quite as deep. I made it half of the depth it was designed to be. Um, the sleeves were exceptionally long. Now, mm. I prefer a shorter length sleeve, so I ended up shortening this to bracelet length, but um, it was initially, with the band, it came down well <laughs> over my hand. Really? So that's longer than any one's arms are yeah, going even to be. mine yeah so <laughs> I would definitely uh, plan on shortening the sleeves yeah the other thing I wasn't too happy about was just where the um, the collar band goes into the hem band goes away to nothing, it disappears so. to nothing and there was no way to make that tidy on mm -hmm. the inside so I ended up having to just add a little bit of bias binding to actually cover the seams, mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, bias binding from the same fabric to cover the seams and to try and neaten that up. But it took quite a lot of manipulating and hand stitching to get it to look nice and neat on the inside. So I think if I was to do it again, I wouldn't bring those bands to a complete point. I'd bring them to sort of five eighths so that I could join them together nicely that before be attaching them. Yeah. Um, and I think that that would make it look a lot cleaner on the inside as yeah. well as on the outside. But other than that, it was a great pattern. Mm -hmm. I would definitely recommend it's it. Lovely made. Um, I definitely want to make more these seven berry fabrics dowties have a huge range and yes. i think i need a red one Ooh. um so i thought a black one would be a good one as just a general go with anything yeah um but i think i need, I need a red, a red one. one next with red suede, with red suede nice. yes <laughs> <laughs> and mine is i'll take my i'm gonna take my cardigan off for you there we go mine is a uh, friday pattern company uh as the lucy de dress and I don't know about you, but my, excuse me, my neck's gone all red. Um, my Instagram has been full of velvet mm -hmm. since before Christmas. Yeah. And I've been lusting over all of the dresses that have been <laughs> made. And this pattern is in the actual description and in the picture for the pattern, yeah. it's in a red velvet. So and the minute I saw it, I knew I loved it. You were quite surprised by the pattern and the fabric I was, choice. I was. It's quite girly for me. And yeah, I'm not Nikki normally... does more sartorial usually. Um, so I love the girly on you. Don't get me wrong, because yeah. you, you do look... But sometimes just going out of your comfort zone, I think Exactly, nice. and I think that that might uh, relate back to your story. Yeah. And maybe you do do more sartorial things because you think that so suits... I feel like a because, giant. Yeah, because of your height, you feel <laughs> yeah. like that suits you better. Yeah, and that, I can't and be girly because I'm enormous. But look how, how gorgeous she looks. So clearly, <laughs> she can, and that is all in her head, which you have said you it's, know it's, and know you're working in my on. Head, but I, I think yeah. feminine styles do really, really suit you. And yeah. I think that you, I'll try you and embrace gorgeous. it a bit more. It was yes. a lovely sew uh, because the velvet is was stretchy but not ridiculously so. And I love the fact that two sides of velvet together, basically you don't need to use very many pins. It was kind of holding itself. Yeah. And the pattern is very little pattern um, pattern notches or anything like that. It's a very simple pattern. I love the little pull on the front. Mm -hmm. I loved making the little ties. Yeah. I love turning them through. All of that was very enjoyable. <laughs> and it, you, it, one of those makes that as you as I'm making it, I'm going, oh, this is really nice. I really enjoy it. This is a lovely pattern. So I would definitely make another one. I might just make something very simple like a Ponteroma, yeah. plain colour Ponteroma, yeah. maybe, maybe even a couple, just for a sort of throw on yeah, um, dresses and but I really enjoyed it. I did add two inches of length to the length of the dress. Thank the Lord that I did because it's just about in long enough for me. But the next one I make, I might even make it slightly longer. Yeah. I might add sort of three, four inches, and um, because I don't like it too too short, yeah. too short and too fr too girly. And it is a set in sleeve, isn't it? It's, so you I could had, adjust the sleeve length as well if you wanted. Oh, I had sleeve gate Did with you? this. Yes, I managed. Don't ask me how. <laughs> So you have the curved part of your sleeve and then you have the straight edge. I managed to set in the straight edge <laughs> into my <laughs> sleeve hole. And then so I had one that was like like a little fluted sleeve because oh, it nice. came out like that. So I was going, that's not how it looked on the pattern. So I'm just, it literally every sleeve I touch at the moment just goes wrong. So yeah. it's just my head. My do you want me to do your sleeves that. from now on? Please do. Yes, thank you. <laughs> just double check them before I overlock <laughs> them, which is probably best. So unpicking on velvet was not fun. Took me all afternoon, but it was worth it in the end. And yes, I'm really pleased. It is with gorgeous, it. really lovely. So we'll pop some pictures up at the end of us we prancing around us normal, <laughs> and uh, we hope you like it. And thank you for listening to our stories, and uh, thank you to Lisa and Hattie and Athena for organising it. Yes, if you've 
uh, watch lots of smiley videos um, and you want to take part in the challenge, um, you don't have to record a video. No. You don't have to uh, bare your soul if no. you don't want to. What you need to do is uh, make something that makes you feel good about yourself. Take so a picture and share it on social media using the hashtag smiley2018. Yes. Um, and There's also a Facebook page as well, so I have a Facebook page which you can join. Yes, absolutely. And lots of people are talking about and just sharing their, their makes yeah. and things. And all you need to do is say why it makes you feel good about yourself. That's yeah. all. Um, and if you do that, you can be entered into a draw for lots of different prizes. Mm -hmm. They're all being drawn at random, so it's not about your sewing skills. It's no. um, it's just that you get to do it. You get to do something that will inspire part. other people and possibly win a prize at the yeah. same time. So. What's not to love? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see you next time with our next video. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye.